Blessings. May the Spirit of God Almighty give you ears to hear. Let me get this situated real fast. So yes, may He give you spirit. May He give you ears to hear. May He give you sound doctrine, ready to receive salvation. May the Lord, the Spirit of God Almighty, the God of all creation, sanctify you in truth so that you will know it and it will set you free. I'm Brother Joseph Herbert Jr. I'm going to get on here and talk about your heart before God. A lot of people will get the excuse that God knows my heart to give them an excuse to do what they want to do is and and sin before Almighty God. God is holy. Overall, God is holy. No matter what you think, no matter what you may try to do in His life and try to make a way of escape His presence, you cannot. You cannot escape from God, for He made all things. Everything that you see, everything that you hear. Everything that you feel is a manifestation of his word, is a manifestation of his mind. His thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are not our ways. He formed the light and created darkness. He makes, he made peace and he creates evil. That's what it says in Isaiah 45. The Lord does all these things. I want to get on here and talk about your heart, your heart before a almighty God and your decisions that need to be made in this life. If you're alive, if you're viewing this message, if you are breathing, you are breathing God's air because he, you draw breath from him. He gives it to you because he loves you. He formed man from the dust of the ground. He breathed the breath of life in man. Man sinned before God. Man has, has given his decisions in the fall of the of man and woman. Woman came from man. Eve got deceived, beguiled from the serpent, and they lost access to the tree of life. They bit from the the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. Sin became in the world, got cursed the ground. So there was access not to God but however the Lord loves man the Lord gave grace for man to obey sin is in the world sin is an offense to God sin is a curse sin is a curse and we as sons of God who are Christians we overcome the curses of this world Jesus Christ is Lord and so your heart before God matters how, how does it matter? Because decisions that the heart is desired to do is highly important. You must meditate on God's word every day. You must worship God. You must keep your mind focused on the will of God because there are too many distractions. There are too many uh, things that will hinder you and weaken your faith. You don't want your faith weakened. You want your faith strengthened, and, and, and you you can do that by seeking Him face face to face. Uh, however, you can't see God's face yet. Man cannot see God's face yet until Christ returns, and then we will see who He is, who He who He is as He appears. And our hope in God, in Christ Jesus, purifies Him ourselves as He is pure. He is pure. His motives are pure. For those who hearts are pure before Almighty God, they will see God. So you, your faith needs to be strengthened by meditating on His Word day and night, by worshiping Him, and praying without ceasing. I mentioned that in the video, my last video actually. And so, what is the condition of your heart if you are viewing this video? This video, your condition, the condition of your heart matters. I'm turning to Psalm 25 because some, something stood out to me this morning as I read that. And I want to, before I you know, get into the topic of this video, matter of fact, it may, it may, 
and may come to an agreement of this topic. And it says, it says this in verse 14. I love it. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him and he will show them his covenant. So God promises, he, he reveals his secrets, his mysteries to the saints, to the sons of God. When you are born again and you seek God every day, he reveals his revelation knowledge to you, his wisdom. Wisdom and might belongs to the Lord, but he gives wisdom to those who who obey, who who he has favor, he has favor on. He has favor on the sons of God. He has favor on those who are truly born again and obey Jesus Christ. So our faith is strengthened when we seek God every day. We can't seek God. We can't have faith in God one day out of the week or two days out of the week. Faith is is strengthened when you seek God every day. The Holy Ghost is the comforter. It is the spirit of truth that proceeded forth from the Father that Jesus Christ promised the, uh, the Christians, the, the disciples. He, prom he promises uh, the Christians as well for those who believe on him who he, whom we have not seen, but we read about him, we meditate on him, God gives us the power to believe and unbelief discourages the Lord. So I'm going to read that again. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him and he will show them his covenant. And so what is a covenant? A covenant is a binding agreement between you and God. A binding agreement before the God of all creation, God makes covenant with man. We are living in the new covenant, the new Testament. And Jesus Christ is the new covenant because he fulfilled the law. He did the will of the father and obeyed in all perfection. So God wants you to go on to perfection, perfected holiness. God is holy and his standards are just his his statutes are joy are, are just and it rejoices the heart when you obey because you want to take full delight in the Lord. So Judas Iscariot, um, before I even get into Judas Iscariot, like disobedience, the curse of man before a God who is holy, especially a professed Christian. When you profess that you are a Christian, you're saying that I obey Jesus. You, you are saying that I my faith is fully in him. You are saying that I am holy as he is holy. You know, you will have the, the accusation on most sons of God. Oh, you think you're holier than thou. And you know, they say that to offend. But no, we don't think we're holier than thou. We can't be. We are holy as he is holy. We're striving to be holy as he is holy. And it's, and it's a possibility that we can do that. We, because he commanded, be holy for I am holy. I am the Lord your God. So your heart before God must be changed. If you are professed to be a Christian, you're a, a disobedient heart betrays the Lord. So Judas, Judas Iscariot was one of the 12. He was a devil. Jesus says, I have chosen you 12, but one of you is a devil. Why did he call Judas Iscariot a devil? Because he was a thief and his behavior resembles the devil. If you are operating or Thinking in a way that is contrary to the will of God, you behave like the devil. If you're thinking always about ways to uh, sin against the Lord, and you may question, Brother Joseph, what are you talking about? I am, I am obeying the Lord. But what about the things that you watch? What about the things that you listen to? What about the things you partake in that God absolutely despises? Um, that is not the will of, fa of the father, a carnal mind is enmity against God, a, a friendship with the world is enmity against God. Enmity is 
is a way of you showing your animosity towards God. So Judas Iscariot behaved like the devil because he was a thief. He would, Jesus called him a devil. And so in John chapter 13, so Jesus says, now I'm going to start in verse 17. If you knew these things. No, give me verse 18. I'm going to start in verse 18. It says, Jesus says, I speak not of you all. I know whom I have chosen, but that the scripture may be fulfilled. He that eats bread with me and has lifted up his heel against me. So that is written in Psalms. Now I tell you before it come that when it is come to pass, you may believe that I am he. Verily, verily, I say to you, he that receives whomsoever I send receives me. And he that receives me receives receives him that sent me. So Jesus is reaffirming, reaffirming his disciples, giving them assurance that when you behave like Jesus and obey Jesus, you not only receive Jesus Christ, but you receive the Father as well. And the Father and the Son are one, as Jesus Christ describes that. And so when you receive the Holy Ghost, those three are one. Jesus, Father, and the Holy Ghost. These three are one. So Jesus became troubled in spirit. In verse 21, it says, When Jesus had this had thus said, he was troubled in spirit and testified and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you that one of you will betray me. One of you will betray me. He was talking about Judas Iscariot, obviously, because that's what, when every time Judas Iscariot's name is mentioned, it always says the one who betrayed Jesus or the one who be, became a traitor. It has to let you know that because the God has to point out he is holy. This person is wicked. This person is a traitor. He betrayed my son. And so Judas Iscariot had power from the Lord. Why do I say that? Because he was part of the 12 and Jesus Christ in, I believe it's Luke chapter 10, when Jesus says, Behold, I send you out. I give you power and the authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all of the powers of the enemy. Nothing shall by any means hurt me. So Jesus Christ says, Verily, verily, I say to you that one of you will betray me. He quoted the scripture in Psalms. Um, I forget which Psalms. So I believe it's Psalm 41. Psalm 41. He that eats bread with me has lifted up his heel against me. Now, why does it say heel? And so, when I was in the world, I used to watch things, uh, sports entertainment like wrestling. And I was so into it. And it always have a division, the good guys versus the bad guys. Now, it, it came to a one, you know, an event that you will see a good guy betray a, another good guy and becomes a bad guy. So that person will be called a heel. And it always used to shock me. I'm not going to name the wrestlers or anything like that. But it always used to shock me to see a good guy turn bad. And... When I read the word of God and it talks about he has lifted up his heel against me, a heel is a bad person. A heel is a traitor. That's what Judas Iscariot became. So then the disciples looked one on another, doubting of whom he spoke. Now there was leaning on Jesus' bosom, one of his disciples whom Jesus loved, Simon Peter, therefore beckoned to him that he should ask who it should be of whom he spoke. He then lying on Jesus' breast says unto him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, He it is to whom I shall give a sop when I have dipped it. And now when Jesus says this at the same time, he's doing this. And when he had, because it says, and when he had dipped the sop, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. And after the sop, Satan entered into him. Then said Jesus unto him, that you do, you do quickly. So how did Satan enter into Judas Iscariot? Because there's an open door. There is access 
He gave the devil access because he was a thief. And so the devil's cursed reprobate role in the, the in this life is only to steal, to kill and to destroy. He can't do nothing else. He's the father of all lies. The truth is nowhere found in him. Jesus Christ revealed that in John chapter 10. So when you are a thief, you are capable of stealing and you do steal. So Ju Judas Iscariot was the, was the traitor and after the sop, Satan entered into him. So maybe you have to understand. So when you behave out of a disobedient and willfully disobeying God Almighty, you are giving devils access in your life. You behave like Satan. You are like Satan. That's just what it says. So Judas Iscariot was a thief. The devil's job is to steal, kill, and destroy. Steal. To, to steal is, one of, is the eighth commandment out of the ten commandments. You shall not steal. So Judas Iscariot was a thief. The ten commandments is... The law of Moses. And there was more than just 10 commandments. There's just the 10 commandments on the two tablets that Moses came down from Mount Sinai. And the Lord gave them. He, Moses broke the first ta uh, two tablets out of his anger because the children of Israel sinned against God while Moses was on the mountain 40 days. And it was made, they made a golden calf. They had Aaron made a golden calf and it was doing um the unadulterated sin they was partying and drinking and all kinds of things was going on while moses was in up on the mount sinai with, uh, with the lord 40 days he comes down and breaks the tablets and the two tablets had to be made again so the two tablets is the ten commandments on there so again judas iscariot beach was the one who betrayed so Jesus tells Judas Iscariot that you do do quickly. Now, no man at the table knew for what intent he spoke to this, uh, spoke this to him. So the, the, the disciples were clueless why Jesus said that to Judas. They, it says they thought because Judas had the bag that Jesus had said to him, buy those things that we have need of against the feast. Or that he should give something to the poor. He that having received the sop went immediately out and it was night. So God is light in him. There is no darkness. So Judas Iscariot had given the devil access to enter into him. And so the devil's kingdom is the kingdom of darkness. So, so why not go out at night? Why not go out and betray Jesus? Because... The de Jesus commanded what you do, do quickly. So he, Judas Iscariot already, already had access to the devil controlling his heart and his desire. He didn't put away being a thief. That's the importance of repentance. You have, you are, your heart has things that needs to be confessed to the Lord. Repentance is necessary. Repentance is a changing of your mind and your desires that is contrary to the will of God. You know that if you do bad things, if you think bad things, you have to confess that to the Lord. That's why praying without ceasing is important. Praying in the spirit, the praying in the most holy faith, praying in the gift of tongues. And or you know, praying, confessing boldly before the the lord of glory the, the his throne of grace lord i thought these things and i didn't like them you don't like them i want to please you i want to be honored by you by my obedience to you father forgive me cleanse me wash me make me holy as you are holy make me faithful as you are faithful and so god will cleanse you from all unrighteousness his word promises that First John, I forget which verse. Let me see. Let me turn it real fast. First John chapter, I believe it's chapter one. I believe it is chapter one as I turn to it. 
So it says, yes, it is chapter 1. If we say that we have fellowship with God, no, nope, further down, further down. Right here in verse 9, it says, if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You have things in your heart that you may think that it is okay, but we have to be honest before God. God is holy. We have to show a form of integrity. God desires truth in the inward parts and in the hidden parts. He will make us to know wisdom. That's what it says in Psalm 51. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. <coughs> Excuse me. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. So in prayer every day, facing adversity, facing different atmospheres of the day, it is highly important that we seek God first. You may come home from work and you have you need to seek God. You need to seek the Lord to wash the filthiness of the atmosphere from the job off of you. Lord, I saw these things. Cleanse me from everything that my ears been exposed of. Cleanse me, scrub my mind from all the multitude of busyness, the multitude of conversations that were carnal, filled with profanity and blasphemy. Fill, uh, cleanse me. Let it not be a part of me, for you are holy. Lord God, I do not want to be filthy. You are holy and pure. And every man that has this hope in you purifies himself just as he is pure. So God will wash you thoroughly from the atmospheres of the day. He will wash your mind from what your mind has been exposed of by these two eights. You have eyes and ears. The eye, Your eyes are the windows to your soul. Jesus says, that the light of the body is the eye. If your eye be single, your whole body will be full of light. So Jesus Christ want, wants you holy. He wants you to be like him so you can obey the Father. And when you are abiding in Jesus, you are abiding in the Father. Because the two are one and also the Spirit of God and the sons of God are one as well. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. My wife was showing me as somebody who had a tattoo. This person was not a believer, but a tattoo of three dots on the wedding finger. And she told me that it would it the person explained that it represents the Holy Trinity. Now the person that got the tattoo obviously did not know what is the Trinity or what's the meaning behind the Trinity. Trinity is not in the the word Trinity is not in the Bible, but Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, these three are one, which is describing the Trinity, is found in First John chapter five. So this person had a tattoo, and as obviously tattoos is a sin before a holy God. The Word of God says in Leviticus nineteen, do not make any cuttings into your flesh, nor tattoos or markings on your body. I am the Lord. We obey God fully. We obey God to the most highest extent of your capability. We strive and we enter in. Yes, that was Old Testament, but God, the word of God says he does not change. Hebrews, I think, it was, I think it's chapter 10. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus Christ is Lord. So, the truly born again Christians does not get tattoos. We obey God. This temple is the body of the Holy Ghost. This Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And we glorify the Lord in our body. Not with carnal things. Not with things that attract the world. We want to attract Christ in us. So we can draw all men to Jesus Christ. So men and women can be saved. So men and, men, men and women can be born again. Jesus Christ is Lord. Now the dangers of sin. I was meditating on Judges chapter 16. That's the chapter of Samson. Let me turn there real fast. So that's the chapter of Samson. When he, Delilah, 
So Samson had a lust problem. Samson is not the greatest example of a a, a man of God. He it, he was a man of God because the strength that Samson had was of the Lord. He did many things it, with his strength, but his problem was lust and fornication and adultery. He looked with lust. He, it starts off in verse 16. Then when Samson went to Giza and saw there a harlot. Uh, what is a harlot? A harlot is a prostitute. And went in unto her. Meaning they was intimate sexually. And it was told the Gazites saying, Samson is come here. And they compassed him in and lay wait for him all night in the gate of the city. And were quiet all the night saying in the morning when it is day we will kill him. Now Samson demonstrated his strength. But I want to get to the part where, when Delilah comes into the picture. Now it says in verse 4, And it came to pass afterward that he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. Delilah uh, made covenant, just like Judas Iscariot made covenant with the Pharisees and the chief priests and elders to betray Jesus Christ the Lord for 30 pieces of silver. So the lords of the Philistines came to Delilah. And said to her, entice him and see wherein his great strength lies and by what means that we may prevail against him, that we may bind him to afflict him. And we will give you every one of us 1100 pieces of silver. It seemed like the pieces of silver was of great value. So Delilah gave in. She wasn't a righteous woman, but the way this came about to Samson that the a man of God in the new we're living in the New Testament we can we don't we not are we are not ignorant of Satan's devices Delilah how she did this was just just plain as day verse 6 it says and Delilah said to Samson tell me I pray you wherein your great strength lies wherewith you might be bound to afflict you why would you even answer a question like that? Those are decept that's a deceptive question. Samson was unaware because of his lust. That is the problem with sin. Sin will curse your mind. If you don't have faith in God, you cannot see the deception of the enemy. You cannot see how the devil is crafty and cunning and he wants you to spend forever in hell. He don't want you to spend forever with God. So Delilah uh, tried to manipulate Samson. In verse 7 it says, And Samson said to her, If they buy me with seven green widths that were never dried, and that was a lie, then shall I be weak and be as another man. Then the lords of the Philistines brought up to her seven green widths, with, with, uh, which had not been dried, and she bound him with them. Now there were men lying in wait, meaning they was waiting to kill him. Abiding with her in the chamber and she said to him the Philistines be upon you Samson and he broke the whips and as a thread and toe and broken it with when it touched the fire so he his strength was not known so yes yeah, Samson uh, lied to Delilah and that's obviously not obviously not counted as righteousness but it's the fact that Delilah was very deceptive and you hear about wicked women in the Bible like Jezebel, like Athalia, Jezebel's daughter, uh, and other women I can't think of right now. But uh, Delilah got upset at Samson for lying. How can a woman who is deceptive and cunning that wants to deceive Samson get mad? How can you be be willfully sinning and get mad because the person sinned against you. That's the question. And Delilah said to Samson, Behold, you have mocked me and told me lies. Now tell me, I pray you, wherewith you might be bound. That's asking the question. Tell me who tell me about your birthright. Uh or tell me about where you get your faith from so I can deceive you. The devil was operating heavily in Delilah. And so even though Samson 
lied, even though Samson mocked Delilah. Yet, if he would have told Delilah, and he did, told Delilah, it had to be had to be after three times. Um, let me see verse verse ten. I'm gonna read verse ten. And Delilah said to Samson, Behold, you have mocked me and told me lies. Now tell me where I pray you where will you where you might be bound. And he said unto her, If they bind me fast with new ropes that never were occupied, then shall I be weak and be as another man. And he lies to her again. Delilah therefore took new ropes and bound him therewith and said upon him, unto him, the Philistines be upon you, Samson. This is the second time they said this. Now, it, you got, it got to cross your mind. She said this, the Philistines, Samson's enemies, the Lord's enemies, the Lord's enemies and Samson did not like the Philistines. The Philistines be upon you, Samson. It's got to cross your mind. This woman said this the second time to you. Trying to get your strength, but Samson, and it says, and there were liars in wait abiding in the chamber, and he broke them free off his arms like a thread. Samson was very, very strong. He had the strength of the Lord. And Elias said to Samson, here you have mocked me and told me lies. Tell me wherewith you might be bound. And he said to her, if you weave the seven locks of my head with the web. So Delilah, as Deceptive as she was, she believed every lie and then gets mad at Samson for lying while she's trying to deceive Samson. You see, this the, <laughs> this is carnal if it's the this was the New Testament. You can't you can't you know both are unrighteous. The 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 word of God says in Proverbs 11, a false balance is an abomination to the Lord. Now, I'm not saying Samson went to hell after doing after lying to Delilah. He was a Nazarite. He was a Nazarene. And so Delilah got mad at Samson for mocking. And, and it says in verse 14, And she fastened it with the pen and said to him, The Philistines be upon you, Samson. This is the third time. And he awaked out of his sleep and went away the pen of the beam and with the web, and she said unto him, How can you say, now here's the thing, this is the deception. How can you say, I love you, when your heart is not with me? That's got to do something. This is the issue of lust. This is the issue of sexual perversion, sexual um, lust in the eyes of God. God will give you over if you continue to partake in sin. He will give you your mind at a measure of blindness and confusion. So Samson could not see the deception, but yet his heart loved Delilah at a measure of condition. It wasn't unconditional love. No. And I believe it's Proverbs 30 that says, to give not your strength to women, for it destroys kings. And so, now Delilah is mocked, and she questions him and says, How can you say, I love you, when your heart is not with me? You have mocked me three times, and have not told me where your great strength lies. And it came to pass, when she uh, pressed him daily with her words, meaning she... She pressed him. It says, and urged him so that his soul was vexed to death. He, she pressed him, and I can't, I only, I can't even imagine how she pressed him. Continue to ask him, where does your strength lie? Where do you get this from? How can you say you, should, you love me? She was playing with his heart, messing with his heart, even though Samson had a lust problem. And then it says in verse seventeen that he told her all his heart. That that was the that was the what the devil wants. That's the the devil wants you to tell all your heart to him. But we have God who is faithful, and so this is what Samson did to Delilah, that he told her all his heart and said unto her, "There has not come a razor upon my head, for I have been a Nazarite to God from my mother's womb." This is his heart. He is expressing. I can't believe it. And every time I read this, it's like, wow, how can you be so deceived? 
If I be shaven, then my strength will go from me and I shall become weak and be like an, any other man. And when Delilah saw that, he told her all his heart. She sent and called for the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come up this once, for he has showed me all his heart. There's the opportunity to deceive Samson. And then the lords of the Philistines came up into her and brought money in their hand. And she made him sleep upon her knees, and she called for a man, and she called, caused him to shave off the seven locks of his body. Of his head, and she began to afflict him, and his strength went from him. And he, and she said to the Philistines, "Be upon you, Samson! The Philistines be upon you, Samson!" And he woke out of his sleep and said, "I will go out as at other times before and shake myself." And he knew not that the Lord was departed from him. But the Philistines took him and put him put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza. Now you you may say. That man, that was so wrong that they put out his eyes. But if you got a problem with your eyes, Jesus says, whoever looks at a woman to lust after her has committed adultery with that person already in his heart. Samson had a lust problem. So the Lord's judgment was his eyes being put out. And that the fact that he told Delilah all his heart on where he get his strength. And so Delilah comes in and deceives him and then they put out his eyes. The Philistines put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza and bound him with fetters and of brass and he did grind in he did grind in the prison house. Howbeit the hair of his head began to grow again after he was shaven. So, moving forward, I'm going to skip skip down to this when Samson was standing between the two pillars. So, his faith in the Lord did not did not disappear. He didn't lose faith in the Lord. That's why I'm saying faithfulness to God is highly important, especially we are living in the New Testament. You are a Christian. Your faith, your faith without works is dead, but your faith in Christ Jesus by obeying him, that matters. Your faithfulness going unto perfection, perfected holiness before a holy God. Well, God will bless the righteous. He reveals the deep and secret things. He knows what's in the darkness and light dwells with him. Light dwells with God is light in him. There is no darkness at all. So God will, will prosper you when you are faithful to him. And so in verse 26, now here comes the faith. Samson was standing between two pillars. And Samson said to, uh, to a, the lad, a small child, that held him by the hand, suffer me that I may fill the pillars whereupon the house stands, that I may lean upon them. Now the house was full of men and women, and all the lords of the Philistines were there, and they were upon the roof about three thousand men and women. They beheld while Samson made sport, meaning they Samson was made as entertainment to the Philistines because they served a false god by the name of Dagon. And that's what it says in verse 23. But verse 28, it says, and Samson called unto the Lord and said, oh, Lord. Now, here, here comes the faith when you are in when you are so weak and you realize that you have sinned against an almighty God. You call on the Lord. You have access. You have access. And Samson called unto the Lord and said, oh, Lord God, remember me, I pray you. And strengthen me, I pray you, only this once, O oh God, that I may be at once avenged of the Philistines for my two eyes. The Philistines were against the children of Israel. So God granted Samson the revenging of the Philistines by the faith that Samson still had for putting out his eyes. Yes, Samson sinned against the Lord by with lust and perversion and lying and all other things that was not the will of God. But yet Samson had great strength. He was a Nazarite and he uses strength for the glory of God. And so the Philistines were were uh, God's enemies. I got to read 28 again. It's so powerful. Samson called to the Lord and said, oh, Lord God, remember me just like the. The thief on the cross, Lord, when you enter into your kingdom, remember me. And Jesus turns to that guy, turns to the, the thief on the cross and says, today you will be with me in paradise. He says, I pray you and strengthen me. I pray you only this once, O God, that I may be at once avenged of the Philistines for my two eyes. 
And Samson took hold of the two pil middle pillars upon which the house stood and on which it was borne up of the one with his right hand and of the other with his left. And Samson said, let me die with the Philistines. And he bowed himself with all his might and the house fell upon the lords and upon the people that were in there. So the dead which he slew at his death were more than they which he slew in his life. So Samson slew uh, the Many people for the glory of God because, again, he was a Nazarite and what was promised about him was being fulfilled. 31, then his brethren and all the house of his father came down and took him and brought him up and buried him between Zorah and Ashtel in the burying place of Manoah, his father. So, and it says, and he judged Israel 20 years. That was the last verse. So Samson, who again he who was not the greatest example of a of the righteousness of God, yet the faith that Samson had and still had in the Lord, God moves and works through faith. God works when you have your faith in God, you don't lose it. You ask the Lord to increase your faith so you can be faithful, full of faith. So you can hear what well, done my good and faithful servant. That's what you want to hear when you stand before God Almighty. And so Judas Iscariot was the traitor to Jesus. Delilah, both individuals, Judas Iscariot betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver, innocent blood. Samson um, was betrayed by Delilah for 1,100 pieces of silver. And that is called extortion. That's talk, Paul mentions that in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. When he gives a list of those you do these things, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. Paul, by the Spirit, mentions another, some more stuff. That, that is not the will of God for the unrighteous man. But that we have our hope in Christ Jesus. We place our faith in Christ Jesus. We do not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the Lord's mouth. So Jesus Christ is holy. And you want to develop your relationship with God in Christ Jesus every day by seeking him every day in prayer. And so you don't want to hear the words, depart from me, I never knew you. Why would he say that? Because those who practice iniquity and operate in wickedness. God despises that. He doesn't want no, he, there's no uncleanness in the sight of God. God is holy. God is pure. You want to spend forever with God when what pleases God the Father is a clean, is clean hands and a pure heart. And you walk in Christ, abide in Jesus Christ so that he abides in you because you are a branch and the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine neither can you unless you abide in jesus and he is the vine you are the branches he that abides in jesus christ bears much fruit for without jesus christ in your life you can do nothing jesus christ is holy you you need to get you need to commit to jesus christ the gospel is for the meek and it says that in Isaiah 61, the same uh, chapter that Jesus Christ quoted when he stood in the synagogue and was given a scroll to read out of. And he read out of Isaiah 61. And then he says, today, this uh, law is fulfilled. This this is fulfilled within your ears. And they all wondered and marveled, is this the Christ? They, they wanted to put him out. Jesus did the will of the Father. He says, my meat is to do the will of the Father who have sent me. Guess what? He has done so. And he's completed the task. He's completed the mission. He made a way for man to be free from bondage. Hard bondage, strong bondage. Things that bind you from and preventing you from access to God through the Father. Through Jesus Christ to the Father. Jesus Christ is Lord, and he commands all men to repent and believe on him. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through Jesus Christ. So 
Let this message be an encouragement to you. You are ordained. If you are a believer in Christ Jesus, you are ordained to spend forever with God. He, he ordained you that you should go bear fruit and that your fruit should remain. That whatsoever you ask the Father in his name, he may give it to you. So Jesus Christ is, he ordained you, meaning he's he has authorized or been invested with invested in you with authority and conferred holy orders from the Lord. He commands you to obey and when you keep his commandments, you abide in his love. This is Brother Joseph Herbert Jr. and this is for his glory.